some problems will try to confuse you by using a new terminology. And you will often find these kind of problems in the beginning rounds of all of these tech companies. And hidden beneath it is a very simple string problem. One such problem is isomorphic strings on lead code. Let's see what we can do about it. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, I will explain the problem statement and we'll look at some sample test cases. Going forward, we will try to solve this problem using a brute force approach and see its limitations. After that, we are going to optimize it and come up with an efficient solution followed by a dry run of the code so that you can understand how all of this is actually working in action. Without further ado, let's get started. Going over the problem statement, you are given two strings and you have to determine if they are isomorphic. So what does isomorphic even mean? Two strings are said to be isomorphic if you can replace all occurrences of a character with some other character and you can form the second string. So let us try to understand it even better using some sample test cases. For example, look at the test case number one. In this example, you can start with the letter E and replace it with A. So my string becomes AGG, correct? And now you move on to the second character that is G and you replace G with D. Once you do that, your string becomes ADD. So we were able to achieve this string, right? So for the first test case, you return true as your answer because these two strings are isomorphic. In our second test case also, you proceed with the first character that is F. So you replace F with B. So you get B O O. Now you look at the second character that is O. So you replace O with A and now your string becomes B A A. Now look at it. The third character is O again, but you have already replaced O with A and hence you cannot replace O with R now. So there is no way that you can achieve this string bar with the first string foo, right? So for this particular test case, false will be your answer. Similarly, look at the third test case real quick. You start with the first letter P and you are going to replace it with T. Next, you will replace A. Moving ahead, you will replace E with L and R with E. And ultimately, you will get your string title, correct? So for this test case also, your answer will be true because these strings are also isomorphic. Now, there is one kind of test case where you have to be careful with. Look at this fourth test case. My string is BADC, correct? So you may say that, okay, I will start with the same process. You replace B with K. So now you get moving on to the next character. You replace A with I. And now look again, the third character is D and you may say that, okay, I can replace D with K and then move ahead. But this is wrong. You see that you have already replaced B with K. So K is already taken care of. You cannot replace any other character with the character K because think about it. If these strings were in reverse order, right? So then you're replacing K with B, then I with A. And then once again, you're replacing K with D. So that invalidates these two strings to be isomorphic, correct? So this third substitution is not allowed. And hence, these strings are not isomorphic. So you have to return false as your answer. Now, if you feel that you have understood the problem statement even better, feel free to try it out on your own. Otherwise, let us dive into the solution. A good developer will always try to come up with a brute force solution first because that can guarantee you if a solution to a problem even exists. So given this example test case, you have to determine if these strings are isomorphic. So how do you proceed? Well, you can proceed in the same way, the way we are verifying our test cases. What did we do? We took our first character that is P and we saw what do we have to replace it with? We have to replace it with the character T. Once you do that, you get a new string. And that is T-A-T-E-R, right? Now, moving on, you move to the next character and that is A. And what do you replace it with? You replace it with I. So A is going to get replaced with I. Now, replace the occurrences of A in this string with I. And what do you get? You get your new string T-I-T-E-R. Similarly, you proceed with the next character P and that is already taken care of. Move to the next character E 
and that has to be replaced with L. Once you replace it, the new string becomes TITLR. Correct? Move ahead now with the last character R and replace it with E. Once that is done, you get your final string that is TITLE. You see that you were able to go from one string to the other string. That's perfect, right? But if you remember from our last test case, you also have to verify if you can go to the first string from the second string as well. So you are gonna follow the same approach, but this time you will try to replace one character at a time from your second string. You start with the first character T, correct? And you are gonna replace T with P. Once you do that, you get your new string P-I-P-L-E. Just keep moving ahead now. Replace I with A. Once you do that, you get your new string P-A-P-L-E. Keep moving ahead one by one and then you will arrive at your final string and that is paper. So you see that we were able to go from paper to title and we were able to go from title to paper. Both the directions, right? So these two strings are isomorphic. And yes, this solution works. You are able to verify and this will give you a correct answer also. But do you see the problem with this approach? In this approach, you are making so many replacements, right? And this will lead to forming so many strings. This will waste a lot of time and you're gonna compare a lot of strings. So definitely this is not desired. We need to come up with an efficient solution. So try to think what can we do about it? Okay, so let us take up this sample test case and try to determine if these two strings are isomorphic or not. So how did we proceed in the brute force approach? We looked at the first character that is L and found out, okay, what do you have to replace it with? You have to replace L with a P, correct? Now notice that you do not have to form your string again and again. What do you have to check? You just have to check if you have already encountered this character before. And there is a very efficient way to determine if you have already encountered a character. Yes, that is a hash map. Because a hash map works in an order of one time complexity to check if your character exists in some sample set. So I will take the help of a hash map and try to map all the characters and their replacement. What do I have to do over here? I have to replace L with P. So I'm just gonna make these two entries over here in my hash map, right? You do not have to actually form the new string. The next character is I and I have to replace it with R. You see how I'm populating my hash map? Simply keep moving ahead. The next character is B and that has to be replaced with I. Moving on, my next character is R and it gets replaced with V. Look at the next character, that is A. You do not have to replace it with any other character and that is fine. So you can simply just add it to your map. Look at the next character now. The next character is R and it has to be replaced with C. Now look at your hash map. When you look at the hash map, you see that R already exists over here, right? And it maps to V. So definitely you cannot change the value of R once again. And that is where you stop. You will say that, hey, these two strings are not isomorphic because you have already replaced the value of R once. You cannot replace it twice. And hence, these two strings are not isomorphic. This way, you can easily determine without wasting a lot of time. Now, notice that there is an edge case that you have to be careful about. For example, you have these two strings, BADC and KIKP. Once again, you create your hash map and then you proceed character by character. You see B and you replace it with K. You see a A and then you replace it with D. You see a D again and then you replace it with K. You see a C again and then you replace it with P. You may say that, wow, these strings are also isomorphic. But here is the catch. Once you are checking in your hash map, you not only have to check the keys, you also have to check in the values column as well. Because think about it. When I encounter the character D, it has to be replaced with the character K, right? You may check that, okay, D is not prevent, so I can add it. But check, what are you replacing it with? You are replacing this value with K. But K has already been taken care of, right? 
So you cannot add this entry over here because think about it when these two strings are reversed. Now, as soon as you replace this K, your string will become B I B P. Correct. And now when you move ahead, you see a K again. This K has already been replaced with B. You cannot replace it again with D. So that is the only thing that you have to be careful about. And once you iterate through the entire string, if no controversies were found, then these two strings are isomorphic and you can simply return a true. Now let us quickly do a dry run of the code and see how it works in action. On the left side of your screen, you have the actual code to implement this solution. And on the right, I have these two strings which are passed in as an input parameter to the function is isomorphic. Oh, and by the way, this complete code and its test cases are also available on my GitHub profile. You can find the link in the description below. Moving on with the dry run. What is the first thing that we do? First of all, we do some sanity checks that if the length of these two strings are different, then definitely they can never be isomorphic, right? Because you cannot add or reduce characters. So if the lengths are not same, simply return a false and you're done. Moving on, what do we do next? Next thing is we create a hash map that will map your character to the mapped character. So you will have the original character in the first column and the replacement in the second column. Correct? So I get my hash map. And once I have my hash map, I will start a for loop to iterate over each character in my first string. Right? So I will start with the string B and check what do I have to replace it with. So my original string is B and the replacement string is K. See this if condition very carefully now. I check if in my map, I already have the original character that is B. Right now, my map is completely empty, right? So I'm just going to add this mapping to my map. So I'm going to say that, okay, replace B with the character K. Now you move on to the next character that is A. So this time the original character changes to A and the replacement changes to I. Once again, you're going to check if your map has the original key that is A. A is not present in the map. So what do you do? You will simply add this to your map, right? So A gets added over here. Now move ahead and check the interesting part. You take up the character D and you have to replace it with K, correct? You come inside your if block and you check if you already have D. You do not have a D over here, right? But do you add it? No. What do you do? You also check if your map contains the replacement value. And what is the replacement value right now? That is K. You see that, hey, K is already present. So if the replacement value is already present, you know that these two strings cannot be isomorphic and you will simply return a false. In any other case also, if you find a character, let's say A, and that maps to X, you check if you can find an A in the map. If A has already been mapped to I, that means you cannot map it to X now, right? In that case also, you're going to return a false. So this loop will run and try to find if there are any controversies that can say that, hey, these two strings are not isomorphic. If you're able to iterate through this entire loop without any errors, what does that mean? This simply means that both of these strings are isomorphic and you simply return true as your answer. The time complexity of this solution is order of n because you iterate through the original string and the space complexity of this solution is order of 1 because you need a constant space in your hash map to determine if the characters have been mapped correctly. Since the characters are ASCII characters, the maximum size of hash map is 256 and that is constant space. I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. As per my final thoughts, I just want to say that whenever you come across such new terms, just take some time and research upon them. Because think about it, when you're practicing, you have some time in your hands to look up and then come up with a solution. But think about it, if you are in a coding interview, if you're in an online round where the time is limited, let's say 60 minutes for three questions, then you cannot afford to waste some time just learning about the topic. The problem beneath it is so simple, right? So just keep that in mind. Whenever you are practicing, just research upon them a little bit. 
So while going throughout this video, did you face any problems or have you found any other such problems which are using a very technical term which is new to you? So tell me everything in the comment section below and it will be helpful for anyone who is watching this video. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify programming for you. Also, let me know what problems do you want me to solve next. Until then, see ya.